I replayed Undertale over the last week, and for some reason I had a feeling some people might be interested in hearing what I think about the game. I find one of Undertale's most compelling elements is its dedication to its storytelling through its visuals. It makes fantastic use of color, and I love both the look and the purpose of the harsher shadows, and both of these help contribute to the tone and convey how a scene should make you feel. And this contrast with the game's overall simpler look makes these moments feel that much more important and special. I also find the gameplay to be fantastic. It's a perfect blend of storytelling and player input, and makes every action you commit to so deliberate. The game really makes you feel every choice you make, and gives every decision a ton of levity. Basically, if picking the mean dialogue option in a game makes you feel bad for a long time, this game could possibly emotionally scar you. But yeah, this is one of the best examples of storytelling through gameplay I've ever seen. Even when you die, you get that... You feel it, and it's a good thing, because you'll probably be seeing this screen a lot. This game doesn't pull its punches, when it wants to be hard, it'll destroy you. Which is why this screen could really use a retry battle option. Just an option you could select that'd take you to the beginning of the battle instead of the last save point. Usually it's not a super long trek back or anything, but having to sit through all the game over dialogue, that speed is largely out of your control. Walk all the way back, and then skip through a ton of dialogue just to get another shot at the battle, even if it's shortened, is annoying. I get the reason that the game sends you back is so you can change your alignment at any point you'd like, but I don't think it hurt to at least have the option, because even if a player accidentally presses restart battle instead of return to last save or whatever, they just die again and pick up the other option. It's not like there's really any penalty for dying anyway. Alternatively, it could use some sort of mini skip feature where you can skip the game over screen or pre-battle cutscene entirely if it's a repeat attempt. Seriously, this is my biggest issue with the entire game. But at least the game over music is good. This game's soundtrack, in my opinion, does a lot of the emotional heavy lifting for its more serious moments, and man is it successful. The music just overall rocks, and the True Pass Fist Run's final boss theme may be one of my all-time favorite songs in a video game, if not in general. Speaking of alignment, I wish the game made it more clear how to begin the genocide route through the game. I get that it's done this way so inexperienced players don't trigger it accidentally on a first playthrough, but not even a hint in a post credit scene or something? It's so unclear, I've seen people go entire playthroughs thinking they're doing it when they really never even triggered it to begin. I speak as one of these people. That being said, I love the unsettling nature of the genocide playthrough. The initial changes caught me off guard and reminded me a lot of old internet creepypastas, which clearly had an influence on some elements of the game. The game has a lot of not only engaging, but genuinely intriguing moments, and many of them have some sort of a vague familiar ness to them. Ness. Yeah, it's no secret Toby Fox took inspiration from the Mother series when creating Undertale, but the sort of permanent finger pointing this game has at it as being the sort of quintessential quirky indie earthbound inspired RPG isn't really all that justified, as the games are far more different than they are alike by miles. The humor, for instance, that I believe many people predicate this belief on, is quite different. They both have an ironic and absurdist edge to them, but the writing of Undertale is heavily and often predicated on an understanding of internet culture, while the Mother series humor is much more centered around characters' focus on seemingly less important things in the midst of a worldwide crisis, and the person of a toy. This is not to suggest that internet culture isn't an element of who Toby is, it just demonstrates how they're different people. And Toby, being a child of the internet, is much more heavily influenced by it, while a toy's inspirations often have roots in more mainstream culture. And this is not a critique of either of these styles of humor or influence. While I prefer the Mother series sense of humor, seriously, screw this character, this is not funny, it's annoying, it's just- it's st Stop- 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 Stop being the game! Oh wait. I prefer the Mother series sense of humor, but that really isn't relevant, because there's no reason these games should be compared just because one is influenced by the other. Drawing comparisons in this way doesn't make sense, because neither work is aiming to compete with or replace the other. You don't say pepperonis suck because it lacks the sweet sensation pineapple adds to a pizza, because it was never aiming for that in the first place. It's its own thing. I do, however, feel though that there are moments which are just attempting to replicate things Mother did, and in my opinion often fall flat. A lot of the comparisons I've seen, though, are so menial and reductive. The characters wearing striped shirts, the bullet points and dialogue, a first-person battle system. There are clear, direct references made, but I'm glad overall these are kept pretty minimal and aren't crucial to the story of the game. Other things I've seen pointed to as references don't make much sense to me. Like, many of these are just some of the most basic components to storytelling. Things like parallels, emotionality. 
The concept of a character calling for help and receiving divine aid at their most crucial moment doesn't originate from Earthbound, it's part of possibly the most famous story ever told. These all just seem like reaches to me, people looking for something in a property they love more because they love it than it actually being there. And I would know. Though the games definitely have similarities, they stand separately, and it's worth celebrating both. Overall, I think Undertale is great, even if I don't love every single thing about it, but the concepts of influence, referencing, and fundamentals need to be differentiated. Yes, point out that the Temmies are a clear attempt at the dev's own form of Mr. Saturn, but also recognize that the Mr. Saturn are an attempt by a toy at his own trial from Midorians. Yes, this present is clearly referencing the ones in the Mother series, but they're used sporadically and aren't meant as the focus of the greater narrative. And yes, the inclusion of an ending that emphasizes revisiting characters was definitely inspired by Earthbounds, but the concept itself derives from the last phase of the hero's journey, one of the oldest storytelling methods in existence. Storytelling is made up of nothing but reused parts. It's how you put yourself into those parts to create something that's unique. But you can also wear your influences on your sleeve while still being your own distinct person. They shouldn't be used to put certain things into a box, but into a present, a gift making something that you love into something that's yours, that eventually more people can turn into their own and love. It's a beautiful thing. And I'm just glad that with Toby's continued success, he's continuing to be seen as his own artist, and not as the guy who makes stuff like Earthbound. He did come close though.